Hi everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. You can probably tell by my voice I've picked up a stinking cold. We've got beautiful, warm, sunny weather. Tomorrow's the hottest day of the year so far in the UK. And yet I've got a bloody cold. What a knobhead. Anyway, um, just wanted to do a review of this. This is a kit that I bought on Sunday at the Gloucester Show. And it was delivered yesterday. Uh, and very, very pleased I am. I haven't looked in the box. Uh, I bought this from Models for Sale. Um, and I could not believe I, I, it's come yesterday. I mean, it came in less than 24 hours of ordering. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, what have we got here? We have got the brand new kit from uh, Hobby Boss. This is the Scammel Commander with 62 cut ton crane through half semi trailer. Um, so this was used primarily for transporting Chally 1 and Chally 2 tanks. Um, here's a first on a box. It says tank not included. Now, normally these Chinese manufacturers, they give you a, an image, like you'll, you buy a truck and it'll be towing a gun or something, and it's only the truck, you don't get the gun, but uh, they've actually got tank not included, so I don't know if someone stepped on their toes or what. But basically this is the Scammell Commander tank transporter that was used primarily in the uh, in the 1990s, well, 19, late 80s and 90s, um, and was replaced by the Oshkosh. And if you want to get the Oshkosh, you can get the Oshkosh from also from Hobby Boss, the M1070. Uh, but it doesn't have the correct trailer, I don't think. I'm not sure if the British use the same trailer as the Americans. And it also has a different nose. But I think they are probably going to do that British version if they haven't done it already and I haven't seen it. But anyway, here it is. So it's um, it's a tank transporter, so you get in the truck and the trailer. Looking around the box, we have CAD images of the actual model itself. So we've got the truck, the trailer, uh, we've got the winch there. Um, it's showing us the photo etch bits and pieces. We've got full interior in the cab, no engine detail. You can see there's no engine um, and it has vinyl tires and wheels. Um, and you can see we've got seats there with the, uh, the bags depicted. So a few bits and pieces there going in. Got some information there about the thing itself. You can freeze now and you can read that yourself. Uh, it tells you all about it. I can't show the end of the box because it's too long. We'll have a look at the other side of the box and we can see here that we've got a couple of images so we've got the uh, this will be desert storm coloring so it would have been green and then painted over in this color um, or you can do the green one and then you've got decals there and we've got two sheets of PE which is a nice touch so looking in the box it's probably gonna be the typical hobby boss brown sprues yes it is it's the tan colored sprues and um, Lots and lots in here. Typical Hobby Boss slash Trumpeter. Brilliant packaging. All parts separated, all kept damage free. So um, we've got individually bagged sprues with the protective foam on. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the base, eight, nine, ten. There's ten sprues there. We've got the clear sprue there at the bottom, which isn't the best place to put it. And then here we have instructions at the bottom of the box as per normal so what we'll do is we'll have a look at the instructions and then we will have a look at the sprues themselves in the meantime i'm going to get the camera adjusted to get you in so it's not so far away okay so typical trumpeter hobby boss instructions um sort of roughly a4 size fold out black and white printed we have the color call outs here which is very nice and once again as in hobby boss trumpeter fashion there is no indication of what unit, year, whatever, where it was based. You need to do that for yourself. But uh, it would be nice if they just said, you know, sort of 1992 Salisbury da -da 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 division. You know, it'd be great, wouldn't it? So um, if you're like me, an old English gentleman, you would have seen many of these on the motorways over the years and then seen their demise and then get them replaced with the big Oshkosh, which is, which is huge. That is something to be seen. So, um, kind of call out, so we go. we've got the green and the tan version. Very, very nice. Looks like we've got a photo etch for those grills in there, which would be nice. So, lovely they've done color call outs. Um, I'd rather they did color call outs in the instructions, to be honest, but uh, they never do. Um, or they very rarely do. I'll probably find in here they've got them now. We shall see. But, um, so we've got some uh, health and safety stuff on here. You know, don't sort of eat the photo etch and... Try not to stab yourself with a knife. So into the instructions here, we've got the sprue call-outs, um, which is basically common these days for uh, for model kits. 
and then straight in we got the, uh, the construction of the chassis I will be building this and I will be covering this in great detail because I was chatting to uh, a gentleman from South Wales who shall remain nameless uh, on Sunday and um, he has asked for some proper videos on how to build a truck chassis so there we go I will be doing that and uh, I'll show you in detail how I do it so we don't have an engine we have a dummy sump and transmission in there so um you know that's all we're going to get and we've also got this cross member here I'm assuming that is part of the transmission and then we've got all these cross members going back right to the rear and the actual main chassis rails themselves which is nice sorry guys I'm sure that during this video I'll be I'll be doing lots of clips and pausing because I need to sneeze cough whatever blow my nose or combination of all three but uh, I feel like crap to be honest I feel like rubbish anyway so we've got a pretty complex exhaust system going in here going onto the base of the dummy engine and then we've got the the first part of our transmission output shaft there leaf springs going into the front and then we're building up our axles it's going to be a pretty quick build this by the look of it building up the axles um, onto the leaf springs typical sort of tandem actual truck thing and then we've got air tanks here steps uh, battery boxes that toolboxes all sorts of bits and pieces and hold downs there going on so lots of that going on and then we're building up this is going to be the winch so this is your winch I'm not sure if you get to put a cable in there or not um, there's no cable included by the look of it so you can add your own and then <clears throat> quite a complex little construction there and then we've got some more um, stowage and oxygen bottles or oxy acetylene bottles perhaps I'm not sure what it is going on there <clears throat> and then we're building up the wheels We've got the air brakes uh, going on the back of the wheels there, and then we've got the bumperettes going on the front of the uh, chassis. And then over the page here, building up the transmission, adding the rear axles, adding in some steering gear. Looks here like we possibly could make the wheel steer. Look, yes, we can make the wheel steer. If you actually drill out these pins here, which I will do, I'll show you how to do it. Um, and then we've got the... Um, I can't think what the word is now. This is the uh, oh, what is the word in? It's the pulleys. It's where the cable goes through for the winch. Um, please don't comment down below because I'll get fifty people telling me what it is. Um, and then we got the wheels going on here, and then uh, this looks like the back, the mounts for the body. And we got some little um, bits and pieces going on the back of the chassis there. Fuel tanks by the look of it. The PE on the top of them, and then we've got more battery boxes with more air tanks or toolboxes, whatever. And they're going on the side of the chassis along with the inner rear wheels. And then we've got the adding those bits and pieces, adding the outer rear wheels, and adding the front wheels and tyres. And then the exhaust system going in. That's all looking lovely. And then, oh, those bits that I thought were actually settling, whatever, it looks like they're exhaust silencers. So uh, I got that slightly wrong, didn't I? Um, and then some bits and pieces here going on. This is obviously going to be for the fifth wheel, I'm guessing. And then we've got some front fenders going in, front mug guards. And then we've got the rear mug guards going on there. Of course, American trucks don't have these because they don't need them. It's funny, if you look at the Oshkosh, it's got these plastic mug guards. They look like a proper Halfords add-on. Um, but the Americans don't have them. They don't need them. Um, do you, we have them due to health and safety or whatever, I don't know. But uh, we've got some um, fuel cans going on there. Very, very nice. And then and then we're adding the uh, the rear lights and everything in here. Put these all together, make sure you get them all the right way around. And uh, that'll look lovely. And then missing a page there. We're onto the cab, building up the cab interior. Uh, we've got the center console bit there. We've got, wow, we've got seat belts. First time I've seen this in a kit, we actually got seat belts. So um, I wonder if we had to get the side seat belts in the cab as well. So building up the seats, adding in the beds at the back, and then uh, adding in the um, the overhead console there. We've got the rear sides going in, the, the, the rear the rear in interior panel, sorry, the side panels going in there. It looks like we've got a roof panel going in. Uh, it's actually giving us some colour call outs, so it's telling us to paint the interior of the cab white. Uh, it's telling us to paint the the um, dashboard in olive drab. The, this part here is going to be mahogany, so obviously had a wooden dash, I'm guessing. And then we've got some, is that pedals going in there? Not quite sure, yes it is, pedals going in. And then more bits and pieces going inside. You've got some fold-down seats there. 
and then we're going to add the cab onto the floor. Uh, it looks like we don't get seat belts, but uh, we do get the latches for the seat belts to go into. Um, steering column are going in and windows going in from the outside, so that's cool. We can paint the cab and everything and then put the windows in after. Uh, we get a die cut mass to go in. Um, yes, yeah, so you get a mass for the inside and the outside, so it looks like you can mask them, paint the frames, and then put them in, which is a nice touch. Um, again, we've got masks inside and outside for the side windows, again for the rear windows, and then we've got some little P brackets going on there. It's probably going to be hold downs or something, and then little bits and pieces, greeblies going on, windscreen wipers going in, and there's some little P brackets going on there whatever they are door handles interior door handles and exterior all very nice looks like this very nicely detailed cab and then we've got the uh, the bonnet construction so we've got an interior frame for the bonnet we've got a grill which looks like it's PE and we've got little PE sides going on there and the uh, bonnet mounting hinges by the look of it and then it's all going to drop down onto the car onto the uh, chassis and it's showing you here how it should look so uh, you can get all your spacing right and everything and then you won't need to mess around in this area here. So <clears throat> over the page, adding on the fifth wheel, got this rail going across the top here, that bull bar type of thing going on there, some grab handles, and then we've got mirrors, lights, bits and pieces going on the rest of the cab there. Still got the uh, gun ring mount in the top there, which is a nice touch. We've got the, uh, the little towing eyes going in there and the, um, and the hook. And then finally, a few more bits and pieces going on. We've got some external mirrors going onto the bumpers um, and some more mirrors there. Oh, that's those mirrors all coming together to come into as one. So all very, very nice indeed. So we're moving on to the trailer. We're starting off with the gooseneck by the look of it. And we've got the, um, the rams there for the feet. And then building up the main part of the, the, uh, the trailer going on. And then adding some more parts there. Adding on the gooseneck onto the main body of the trailer, and then we've got the, the main cross member going in there on the rear. This is going to support the rear suspension, building up the rear suspension with its multitude of wheels, and then <clears throat> adding all that into the uh, into the actual trailer itself, adding in the toolboxes on the sides, and then we've got spare wheels going in. We've got our actual feet there going on, their support feet for the um, oh, they're the support feet. Not quite sure what these are. Looks like cylinders of some sort. And then we've got the rear lights going in. And then we've got some little bits and pieces going in. Grab handles and stuff like that. There's some, some pulley there for the winch system. And then rear ramps going on. Looks like you could have those folding if you don't glue those pivots. So it looks like you could have them positionable if you want to. Um, and then we've got some more pulleys going in there for the winch system. And then lots and lots of pieces. Got uh, guides there for the for the tank tracks. We've got some hold down loops going on the sides there. More hold downs going on the back. You could actually do this as a dio with all your chains and everything, with all your uh, tourniquets holding everything down. And then finally, dropping the trailer onto the back of the tank. What I didn't onto the back of the truck. Sorry. What I didn't notice is how much photo etch there is on here. <clears throat> it does look like a lot of this is just moulded on. But I didn't catch the photo etch going on, so yeah, that's just moulded plastic, so that's all like tread plate, and then we've got photo etch for the uh, grills in the centre, so all of the tread plate all here is all moulded plastic, but you've actually got grills in the centre, so there you go. So that's the instructions, let's have a look at some plastic. Okay, I should go through this as it comes out of the box, so it's going to be no particular special order. So here we have our sprue of clear parts. I wasn't going to open this, but I will just to see how good they are. I can't even open a bag properly today, look at me. So, here's our clear parts, and yes, how very clear they are. We can put them on top of here and we can see they are very nice indeed. No distortion whatsoever, which you'd expect because they're flat, but some people manage to get distortion. A little bit of... um. A little bit of funny stuff going on with those side windows, but uh, it's not going to notice on the finished model. But yeah, very nice indeed. Lots and lots of little lights and stuff on there. So put those over there so they don't get scratched. So the first sprue out of the bag, out of the box, 
is this is sprue F, what that matters. So sprue F is consisting of oh come on. So sprue F is basically we've got our radiator here, we've got our fans, which are not going to be seen. We've got our main fenders there, mud guards, fifth wheel. This is parts of the winch by the look of it, bumperettes. Um, we've got some lovely slide moulding going on there with the uh, cross members and toolboxes and stuff. Not quite sure what this is protected under here. It's just a few small boxes and stuff under there. Um, and then we've got some wheel backs. We've got a rear axle there. But uh, very, very nice. Uh, there's some mould seams going on, but they're nothing excessive. There's a tiny bit of flash on the sprue down here. We've got ejector pins on the back, obviously, but I don't think they're going to be much of a problem. This is going to be the inside of the winch, so they're probably not going to be seen, but they are very, very shallow. So it'll be nothing. In fact, that one feels raised. Um, nothing to get rid of those, but uh, very nice indeed. Very crisp. I do like this Hobby Boss tan plastic. It, I find it very nice to work with. But that's just my opinion for what it's worth. So, what have we got in here? Well, we've got lots of stuff going on under there. Let's get this uh, foam off. So, what have we got underneath there? We've got our dashboard, we've got this is the uh, visor going up in the top, I think this is mainly, this is a lot of the interior here, we've got the actual instrument panel there, uh, we've got some greeblies here, we've got the steering wheel, a little bit of flash and stuff on there, which is not really good for a 2022 kit is it, but uh, got some oil on here so it's going to have to be washed, we've got the interior rear panel there, we've got the inside structure for the hood, bonnet, whatever you want to call it, we've got some sort of gear lever there, we've got the floor, the ribbed rubber section, front axle, pivots on the end, as I say, we'll make this steer. Got the doors there, interior door detail is separate, which is there, so we've got the interior door, door, door detail there. You can see we've got the instrument panel, which is um, nicely done. So yeah, all in all, pretty nice. I'm getting the feeling, looking at this, this isn't as nice as the, as the 1070. From Hobby Boss, which is a much older kit. Um, that just could be because I was blown away by that kit because it was amazing for its time, and now this is better, but not as you know, we, we've caught up. But, um, so, we've got here this is the um, front of the gooseneck, we've got the actual main body of the gooseneck there. There aren't any welds, I would have thought there would have been welds in here. You can see on here the oil, there's lots of it on there. Uh, ejector pin marks to be dealt with there if they're going to be visible, which they probably will be. And then we've got ejector pins in the back here. So, uh, and you've got this moulded on tread plate, which looks very nice indeed. It looked great with a with sort of chipping, scratching, dry brush, whatever. So, yeah, that's um, let's get the main rear cross member of the chassis there, of the trailer. So, yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Here we are back onto the truck. As I say, I'm just doing these as they come out of the box. So they're in no particular order. I'm just doing this as it comes out of the box. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I haven't seen a review of it. Um, there's some cross members under there which are being hidden away by the foam. We've got our main chassis rails there. So we've got a beautiful chassis to build up. Some lovely moulding on these grills on the side here. We've got a rear axle. Parts of the transmission, leaf springs, which are very nice. They're molded in one piece, and thankfully they've got no sink marks in them. Normally, leaf springs, when they're molded as one, they've got sink marks in them because they're so thick. But these, there's very slight shrinkage here, but you're not even going to see that once they're painted matte. Um, very nice indeed. Part of the exhaust system, another part of the exhaust system there. But uh, some beautiful bolt head detail on all here. Beautiful bolt head detail on the axles. So all in all, it's quite impressive actually. It's really nice, isn't it? And there's no ejector pin marks on the inside of the chassis, which is a lovely touch. So you can see on there, there's no ejector pin marks in there. Really, really nice. Very nice chassis. That's going to build up to a little beauty. 
Just thinking this is going to look lovely stood next to my uh, 135th Land Rover short wheelbase I did. Again, that was a Hobby Boss kit, wasn't it? If you haven't seen that, go and have a look if you're into your British armour. I did a, 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 a 110 into a 90. So here's the main chassis of the uh, trailer. We've got a tank there which is moulded in one, which is great because there's no sinkage in it. I thought there would have been a sinkage. And we've got some main uh, cross members for the uh, for the trailer. Remember this thing can carry 62 tonnes. So um, quite incredible really, it takes that much weight. But uh, very, very nice indeed. Some parts of the winch there. Fair lead was the word I was looking for. The fair leads, that's what it's called. They lead the cables through the winch, from the winch, the fair leads. So there we go. We've got a um, shackle there. Nice. Oh, nice. We're back onto the truck now. We've got two of these. We've got two of these sprues in one bag and they're wrapped up together. So we'll cut this foam away and we'll have a look and see what's in here. It's always a problem cutting this tape. It's like it's made of mnemonic material. Right, let's get rid of that. So we have two of these sprues and you can see we have wheels, leaf springs, for the back of the truck, uh, air cylinders for the brakes, a little bit flashy, a little bit mold seam like. Um, in places like over here it's sort of flashy but over here it's okay some very very fine molded parts there so yeah seat bases and backs there's the uh, seat base convoluted thing it's so all in all it's all there it's just just could have been a bit crisper I think I don't know it's it's lovely, it's a lovely kit, it's just lacking something in my opinion. But it's, you know, if you want a Scammell tank transporter, then this is your only one. But, um, for this era. But yeah, you can see on there, I've got some very finely moulded detail. But I just think it could have been, you can see the oil on there. I just think it could have been a little bit more, I don't know, like that looks a little bit soft, doesn't it? Just my opinion. Maybe it looks quite soft in real in real life. I don't know, but uh, don't know. Overall, though, it looks very very nice, and it will build into a beautiful tank transport at the end of the day. And yes, I am going to build this, and I am going to build this very very soon because I do love building trucks, and it'll be a change from airplanes and helicopters, won't it, guys? So we've got the the tread plate moulded on there. This is actually the main body of the tank transport. So you have your wheels under here. You've got some big ejector pin marks in there. Um, you might want to fill them, you might not. And then we've got some injection marks here. Got one, two, three. So we'll have to get rid of them. Just sand them down. Obviously photo etch mesh going in there. And then you've got the the bits and pieces to go down on the base of the tank transport. You might just have a Land Rover on there, you might have two little guns or something, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a tank, whatever you want on there. So we'll put that back in its bag so it doesn't get scratched. But very nice indeed. And then here we've got another bag of two sprues. This keeps on giving, doesn't it, this box? So we've got two identical sprues here. So uh, this is going to be wheels for the trailer. They're very nice. Unfortunately though, oh, Hobby Boss, what were you thinking? The bloody wheels have got one, two, three. Five ejector pin marks in each wheel. What were you thinking when you designed this? You bloody... Oh. What a pathetic design. Honestly, what are these companies thinking? They've got five ejector pin marks in every wheel. 
Can you imagine trying to get rid of them? They're, they're in between bolts and the rim and they're on a curved surface. 10 out of 10, I'll be boss. Well done. I, I, I honestly wonder if these companies employ people who ever it would build models. I just I don't think they do. Anyway, fenders there for the um, for the uh, back of the truck, and some other bits and pieces, more fairly um, pulleys there. We got some uh, steering arms by the look of it, or suspension arms. We've got the main track rod there. Um, we've got some prop shafts, more prop shaft up there. So yeah, all very good. Again, a one-piece moulded cylinder. That's unusual. But it makes life a lot easier. Masks for the windows. So they're pre-cut as well. So that's very good. We got the photo etch here. So there's the photo etch grills for the uh, for the trailer, and there's some tread plate. And then here's all parts for the actual truck itself. Got the grill. The end pieces of the grill, we've got some mesh there, tread plate for the top of the toolboxes, fuel tanks or whatever. You can see there, there's your, there's your photo etch. We've got a little sprue here of greeblies, little bits and pieces. A warning there saying long vehicle. We have the bonnet, or the hood, with commander on the side, which is nice. We have the main cab itself, which has commander moulded into the roof, so you might want to sand that off before you paint it. That's very, very nice, nice and crisp and clean. And then we've got truck tyres. <coughs> look at one of the truck tyres. So they're very nice, they have Michelin moulded on them, which is cool. We have the size on them. The tread is very nice, very slight mould seam in the middle that have to be sanded off, but that won't be a problem. But they are very nice indeed. Um, kind of think, why do you need resin wheels? Probably would want resin wheels for that trailer because of those bloody ejector pin marks. <clears throat> and then here we've got the trailer tyres, which again look to be very nice. On the trailer tyres we have no lettering, we have the tread which is lovely, but there's no tyre lettering at all on those. So I think probably resin wheels for the trailer would be one aftermarket requirement for this, you know, to get a better look for the tyres and the wheels. Um, I shall have a look and see if there's anything available. And that, my friends, is basically that. So that has been a review of this Scammel Commander, Scammel uh, Tank Transporter. The kit number is 85527. It's a beautiful, beautiful kit, let down by those rear wheels, I think, but you know, it's nothing too much to replace them. A lot of people would replace them anyway. Um, I'm sure there'll be aftermarket replacements out there. So, all in all, I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, it would be a 9 out of 10 if it hadn't been for those wheels. 10 out of 10 if it had, had full engine detail and everything, because as you can see, when you look at it here, you can look straight through, which isn't really accurate, is it? Probably put something in there, um, or just chuck something in there. It looks like an engine, perhaps, I don't know. Um, as I say, I got this from Vince over at Models for Sale. If you want to get yourself one, a lot of people are saying this is overpriced, this kit. I think it is overpriced. I think it's about £140, isn't it, retail? Um, maybe even more. Um, I didn't pay that for this from Vince because he always does a good deal for me. Give Vince a call, see what deal will do for you. I know he's got a few in stock. Um, it was quite hard to get hold of a few months ago, I know that. But I think there's a few available now around the country if you're in the UK. Um, but as I say, give Vince over at Models for Sale a call. And he'll or phone you, when you phone them, you'll get Maya on the phone. And they'll, uh, they'll do you a good deal, no doubt, with um, free postage and very, very quick delivery. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. And um, as I say, I will be building this on the channel very, very soon, probably alongside the Land Rover. So uh, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.